With a hospital network that includes Mass General and the Brigham, Partners Healthcare calls itself the marquee health provider in Massachusetts. But critics say it's an 800-pound gorilla and caution against allowing it to get even bigger. Partners is already the state's largest health care system, with most of its hospitals in the Boston area, a few on the Cape and Islands, and one out in Northampton. If its proposed acquisitions go through, Partners will add three more hospitals to its network, South Shore Hospital in Weymouth and two Hallmark health care systems, hospitals in Melrose and Medford. Attorney General Martha Coakley reached a preliminary antitrust settlement with Partners that placed limits on future growth, but... A coalition of smaller hospitals is fighting the merger, saying it would lead to rising costs. Here's Leahy Health CEO Howard Grant, who appeared on Greater Boston last month. We believe that this settlement, if allowed to go through, would result in hundreds of millions, if in fact not billions of dollars in, of increased cost over time. Right here to defend the planned acquisitions is Dr. Gary Gottlieb, the president and CEO of Partners Healthcare. Welcome to Greater Boston. Thank you so much for having it's me. Great it's great to have a, you. I wish we had had you here. two together, but that wasn't going to be. So, I mean, you've been portrayed as the bad guys. You've got this group now that's Leahy, Tufts, and a couple other hospitals that are, you know, trying to get the attorney general to reverse her decision mm -hmm. about this merger. They're saying that, you heard him say, it's going to be billions of dollars of increased health care costs. How do you respond to that? Well, this is all about patients and getting the right care in the right place. We've laid out a vision, and we've laid out a vision ultimately for the Attorney General and for the public that describes how it is that we're going to, in fact, reduce costs by getting care to people in the community, to use community hospitals and the community physicians as the front end of health care, to have, keep people from having to schlep into town to be able to, to provide their uh, care at academic health systems, and to be able to provide a higher degree of coordination and efficiency over time. We've been able to show that we can do some of this, and we want to be able to do it in the right way and get the right care in the right place at the right time. All right. And once again, the critics are saying that this is all about competition, control, and that a lot of these smaller hospitals are going to go out of business like they already have. Maybe, maybe rightfully so. I don't, I'm not, that's not my business. I don't know. But that that's really what you want to do is make your operation bigger and, and that these lower cost, high quality hospitals won't be available to people in their own communities. Those are excellent hospitals and I believe that they will be available. Our vision is really about our patients and getting them care where they live and being able to do it in the most efficient way possible. To really uh, adapt to new payment mechanisms that create incentives and that are really sensitive in a better way to prices so that we are accountable and are able to show the excellence of care that we can provide and still have people have in the back of their mind that they know that they have available to the excellence mm -hmm. of the academic medical centers. So I, I realize this is a, a highly competitive world and of course Howard Grant's group, the Leahy Tufts group, also wanted to acquire some of those hospitals, mm -hmm. including Emerson. So there's some competitive jealousy mm -hmm. here. I mean, we can just acknowledge that. But he makes a couple other points. Sure. And one is about jobs. And here, listen to this. Massachusetts will not be an attractive place for anybody to come to bring jobs. Mm -hmm. um, the cost of care is unsustainable as it is. And if it goes up farther, it will become even more difficult over time. All right. So. It's going to drive jobs away from Massachusetts, and the cost of care is unsustainable. People won't want to live here. So first, you know, the quality of care in Massachusetts is one of the things that attracts companies here. Um, it, we have been able to show the outcomes that are associated with health care in Massachusetts are very, very high, and we've continued to do that over an extended period of time. Additionally, the work that we do in healthcare and, frankly, the investments that we make in the life sciences have been among the biggest magnets for jobs into this marketplace and continue to do mm -hmm. so long into the future. But at the same time, health policy here has created guardrails about the increase in terms of health care costs. And it's going to be on us to be able to deliver in continued improvement of care while bending the cost curve. I feel a little bit like this is kind of the NAF, you know, NAF new debate that, you know, you don't really know until the treaty is signed what the result's going to be, and you're going to have these arguments on both sides. But, I mean, can you guarantee, can you look people in the eye and say, costs are going to be lower. They are not, as the critics and doomsdayers say, going to be higher. Well, in two ways. First, this, we're going to be about the most regulated health care system in the United States if this agreement goes through. Uh, and one, 
in the contracts that we'll have in which we have some risk associated with the cost of care, we'll be fully bearing the burden of any downside risk. So if we spend too much, we essentially will have to pay the payers back as it relates to those risk contracts. At the same time, our price increases will be at the level of inflation uh, over an extended period of time. And finally, as prices become more transparent and as healthcare insurances and other policies make consumers and referral sources more price sensitive, we'll have to be accountable or we'll lose our, own, mm. our very cherished patients. I mean, a, a recent study basically found that there's no difference between the quality of lower cost health care and higher costs. So, I mean, do, do, you basically, do you essentially agree with that? And if that's the case, then why can't you lower your, your, your costs? Well, so, you know, about one in six of the patients at the Mass General and at the Brigham are transferred from the other hospitals yeah. in this marketplace, from the community hospitals and the other academic medical centers. So there are a variety of things that both patients want as well as other physicians and other hospitals want that pretty much only we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, additionally, it's on us to improve the focus on showing the quality of what it is that we do so that there are measures that truly differentiate providers in a better way. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you, if you haven't if you haven't lowered, why not do it before the merger goes in? Why not lower some of the costs now and just as a, as a sign of good faith? So, you know, a couple of years ago when we, were, when we were negotiating our contracts, we reopened agreements we had that promised us higher price increases than we ultimately, mm -hmm. than we ultimately got. And we ended up giving back about $350 million worth of payments that we would have had at higher rates over a period of about four years. Um, and additionally, the contracts that we're going into have risk for us so that if, in fact, too much is expended, we have losses mm -hmm. associated with that. There's like this big PR campaign against you. I mean, they're, they're, they're putting millions of dollars into this bucket and they're going to, you know, I mean, I don't think we've even seen it yet before the merger goes through. But how do you feel about that? How do you feel about how Partners is portrayed in all of this? Well, I feel that, first, these are good people. They're the running excellent. They're running excellent <laughs> yeah. institutions, um, and those institutions are very important parts mm -hmm. of our community. Uh, it's a very uncertain time, and it's one that creates a sense of a higher degree of competition as to how things are going to turn out over a period of time. So, uh, you know, I feel like I'd like to continue to move forward. I want to move forward with plans so that we can deliver on the promise that we've made to the public. Are you concerned at all that there will be a, a reversal of this merger decision? No, I'm confident. I think that this is um, a, an agreement that was negotiated over a period of time. It will be very, very hard for us um, with the degree of regulation that we'll have to face over that period of time, and I'm confident that, that the consent decree will be approved. Because one of these uh, deadlines was moved and there's some, you know, cynical talk that it had to do with the political maneuverings of the uh, gubernatorial race. Is that a factor, do you think? You know, I, I think that basically it's given time for there to be a comment period um, uh, and for airing of some of the concerns that people have had. All right. Dr. Gary Gottlieb, thanks so much for coming. Thank you.